some of the ideas are epic, where it's the idea that somehow it's a moisturizer foundation, puts itself on, takes itself off. I mean, who doesn't <laughs> want these things? I would buy that genie. Yeah, yeah we all would. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephanie Patrick, executive editor of Adweek, and I am here in the Google headquarters in New York today at our CMO Move Summit. And I'm here today with Emily Culp. She's the CEO of CoverFX. And I'm so glad that you're with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So what is the thing that you are most excited about with your business right now? You know, what warms my heart and what I love the most about this transformation with this really special brand is we are rolling out a whole new positioning, which is called Your Formula for Beauty. So you'll be seeing that globally across all our omni-channel touch points. You can get a sneak peek right now on our website. So different colors, different tone, different imagery, and a lot of new types of products. How do you decide you know, what colors to release? What's part of your thought process there? I think one of the most important things in product development, people always talk about innovation. And usually people think new colors, new formulas, something else, all of that is hugely important. But innovation can also be in a different technique or a mechanism that the formula comes out, like a different innovation there, whether it's a pump or what have you. But one of the key ingredients around all this is our consumer. She slash he is very, very bright, very enthusiastic. So we actually ask them a lot of questions. One of my favorites recently was on Instagram. We posed, you know, if you had a makeup genie, what would that person have? You know, we had thousands of comments in a matter of minutes. So that's a great feed into our product innovation pipeline and how we evaluate different options. I love that. And so you're listening to your social channels for Absolutely. product development purposes. Yeah, I mean, these are the yeah. most passionate people. Some of the ideas are epic, where it's the idea that somehow it's a moisturizer foundation, puts itself on, takes itself off. I mean, who doesn't want these things? I would buy that genie. Yeah, we all would. <laughs> it's also really interesting. People give you great ideas on formulas or different shades that they wish we had, and we listen to them. What is something coming down the pike that you think is really going to change your business or beauty in general? It, one is on the technology side, one is more ethereal. The ethereal one is I'm so excited when clean beauty actually gets defined. Because right now, the analogy I would make is, remember organic food, like 20 years ago. Everybody all of a sudden was like, it's organic. But did you really know, none of us really knew what organic meant, and if somebody labeled it, is this truly organic? That's what's happening in clean beauty right now. So I think there's a huge white space there. In terms of technology within the beauty area, I can't wait for color matching technology. I've been looking at this for 15 years at different companies when it's really truly there. So somebody can shade match you based on a photograph and also say not only are you a P20, which is what I am, <laughs> and have dry skin and figuring out what type of skin type, but all of that is accurate. And yeah. we're not quite there yet. I love that. I remember when it felt revolutionary when you could go to a cosmetic store and actually try it on, you know, and 100%. actually, you know, where yeah. they have samples out and you can yeah. test it, but Shade imagine match. if you never yeah. had to leave your home. Exactly. What is a problem that you're trying to solve right now? It's making sure that I have the best talent in place who's feeling challenged, respected, and motivated to contribute. Because at the end of the day, that all comes through to the consumer. And you can't have a great product experience or product without amazing people behind it. How do you set the tone for your company and for your culture? I think one of the most important things is humility. Um, everyone in my company could tell you I, I have some great skills. One of the areas for growth for the rest of my life, I can't spell. This is a negative, but it's just who I am. I've tried everything known to man. But beyond humility, also, as you can tell, I think humor is key. Mm -hmm. When you really take a step back and think about what we're doing, it's an amazing, beautiful, innovative complexion product. But I think it's also very important to th think through, you know, what can you control, what can you not, and how to keep perspective. And then finally, I try and instill in everyone a sense of curiosity. I'm super passionate about what I do, and I think it's really important if you're super curious as a person, then you'll think through different challenges or situations in a different way, because you're looking at different industries or getting different sources of information. Yeah, and that curiosity can be contagious too. And if, if I like to hope so. Yeah, or it's yeah. okay to ask questions. A hundred percent. So what is a piece of career advice that you have either given or received that you think is worth passing on? That's a really good question. Can I give two? Yeah. I'm gonna give you two. Okay, so yeah. two. One is, and I mentioned this earlier today, always stay close to a P&L and be a revenue source, not overhead. 
So I got that advice early on when I was going into marketing and as a result have always had a P&L associated with me. And I really am so grateful because the financial acumen along the way has made a massive difference, taking that leap from marketing into a different type of leadership role. The second one I would say is I purposely, I'm drawn to business challenges. I'm actually industry agnostic. So I've been in beauty, footwear, ready to wear, back into beauty, CPG, done. I think where that's important is it makes you very agile. It also makes you very humble. I, many times I've been in the room and don't know all the lingo somebody is using who may report to me or maybe a peer. So it makes you agile and able to learn and continue to iterate. I love that. Well, Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you all for tuning in to Top of Mind.